Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is Nilatri Mahapatra. Once again, we are presenting our next uh, tutorial that's on product backlog grooming or the backlog refinement. So today we'll talk about what exactly the product backlog grooming is or what do we mean by uh, backlog refinement. I have seen many of the practices, they don't uh, give that much value of product backlog grooming or many teams they do product backlog grooming and sprint planning at the same time. So today we'll talk about uh, when we should do it and what is the benefit of it, who will be responsible for that. And at the same time we'll talk about many other points for grooming like what is definition of ready, what is a well-maintained product backlog, what is a prioritization, what is splitting big stories into smaller stories. So we'll talk about uh, during the grooming, splitting a big stories into a smaller stories. Then uh, we'll talk about different states of stories in a agile life cycle, the stories moves from very beginning to end and what are the different stages it has passed through. Similarly, we'll talk about 3C, the, the acronym for three uh, component of a user story and when we are grooming, we are talking about each and every part of that 3C. So that 3C is a card, conversation and confirmation. So we'll talk in details during uh, the entire session of today. Also, we'll talk about uh, backlog health and its uh, measurements and metrics, how we'll be using this uh, grooming to increase our backlog health and how we can measure the backlog health, what could be the different metrics that we can bring up from uh, this grooming session. We will tr uh, try to understand <clears throat> what is an acceptance criteria. We will try to understand what is a backlog refinement. So we will talk about backlog refinement. That's actually the entirely grooming session we uh, do. It's another uh, name is backlog refinement. So we call it as grooming or backlog refinement. We'll talk about uh, story point estimations. We'll talk about invest, that acronym, what exactly the invest is. We'll talk about understanding the requirements and the vertical slicing. So we also have uh, something uh, called deep. That's uh, when you are actually uh, calculating the product backlogs uh, maturity we calculate is you know, through deep so we'll talk about that also okay everyone ready let's begin so assume uh, this is our product backlog. So this is a very fresh product backlog. Nothing is yet groomed. The product owner has created the backlog and have lots of stories. So these are the stacks of stories we have in our backlog. So when we actually do grooming, what we do is we have a, a session of one hour or two hour, whatever we have scheduled. And based on that, we pick the first story. We we in a sense the developer the tester the scrum masters facilitates and the product owner demonstrate for each and every stories and clarify the doubts so the entire team gets a clarification of uh, the entire requirement they remove all uncertainty whatever is there they keep on talking they remove any unknowns and elaborate the requirement if the story is very big they break into a smaller stories and then again regroom, re-estimate for those smaller stories. Then we talk about uh, the invest. Invest is an acronym that calls independent, negotiable, vertical or valuable, estimable and the small taste. So we'll talk about details in invest later. So we also look into uh, that invest. We also do prioritization based upon its dependencies, risk or cross-functional involvement. Keeping everything in mind, we reprioritize and mark the stories uh, as groomed or move it to the low priority story. And that way, there are many other ways we actually look into the story. So the primary goal of this grooming session, everyone pick one story, talk in details of every part of the requirements, see all uh, dependencies, see all tasks uh, that can be depends upon uh, cross-functional team and we identify the risk and that way then we do an estimation so here you can see one story we picked up 
we talked about that and then estimated as story point one so if you see here this is a story point one we have estimated and then we keep on doing that and later you see after the grooming session we have multiple user stories groomed with a story point defined so we do that estimation through any techniques planning poker complexity bucket or whatever the ways uh, is comfortable for you you can do that uh, estimation and mark the story as groomed now once we groom the story we are uh, done for that sessions the rest of the stories will be grooming in once again but what is the benefit of doing the grooming so if we look into the quick benefit we have uh, the efficiency of the development team that got increased we keep, by doing a, a continuous grooming we um, matured up our uh, estimation so uh, our estimation become more accurate going forward if you are in sprint one right now after if you see after sprint six your estimation will be more matured and that comes up from continuous grooming then uh, your sprint planning will be more effective you don't need to groom stories or clarify your unknowns you don't need to find out who is available on the cross-functional dependent uh, stories so that way your sprint planning will be effective and you uh, that way mature up your user story you make your backlog healthy we'll talk about backlog health uh, later on this uh, session then uh, we uh, already define our dependencies we know for uh, this story these are the dependencies and we need to talk with that person or that team or any other member that we need to talk with for clarify the dependencies we already uh, have defined the risk in the uh, grooming session so it will be very good for uh, mitigate those risks if you have identified earlier and based on that you can do a sprint planning that okay if we plan this story with this many risk we will be able to resolve this or we'll um, uh, select it in the next story next sprint sorry then uh, in a user story when we talked about that 3c uh, the last c is for uh, confirmation that's the acceptance criteria so during the grooming we elaborate our uh, acceptance criteria make it understandable and feasible for the team to follow and also if uh, there are uh, some stories very big we can split into multiple stories we can get into smaller stories and smaller stories definitely is easy to manage easy to estimate and easy to execute and there are many other benefits once you will start uh, doing the grooming you eventually able to realize okay these are the benefits we can have so now who is responsible for grooming so we know we have a scrum uh, team or a agile team we have three major roles like uh, the development and testing team the product owner the scrum master but who is primarily responsible for grooming actually if you are doing grooming you need three these role and a cross-functional team also if that is this cross-functional team is optional if there is a requirement of optional uh, cross-functional team for resolving any dependencies we uh, include or invite the cross-functional team but primarily the scrum master who facilitate the entire grooming session and the development team sorry uh, the cross-functional team they uh, do on-demand support and requirements so if you, you are grooming one story and you are a ui developer or any functionality developer that needs another team that does a, a database integration or monitor on etl jobs and your particular that story needs uh, that kind of uh, involvement you also include that cross-functional team member so that they can help you understand estimate and uh, clarify the unknowns on that grooming sessions and the development team uh, sorry the product owner always uh, prioritize and the backlog and uh, clarify doubts whatever asked by the development team so if uh, we are doing a grooming session the scrum masters is there who is facilitating the entire grooming session the cross-functional team is there for supporting the development team for any kind of cross-functional dependencies and how to resolve it, identifying the risk. So uh, cross-functional team's involvement is required if uh, there is some cross-functional dependencies there. And product owner always prioritize clarified doubts, talked about, uh, answer all the questions from the developer. 
and the developer try to understand the requirement and later once all the clarification is cleared we do an estimation so that estimation again uh, we do through uh, many techniques planning poker or uh, complexity bucket and get and story points for that and once we have everything we says okay our story is now groomed let's mark it as groomed i'll tell you how to uh, mark a story and then uh, we says okay uh, let, let's move to the next story so that's way everyone is involved the product owner scrum master development team and cross functional team and they mutually make a story ready as groomed and market for uh, ready for the next sprint planning now again and the question is uh, how much uh, when and how much a team should conduct a backlog grooming so uh, many teams they um, says okay we don't need any grooming session we do at the time of sprint planning but uh, sometimes uh, many teams says okay we don't need at all grooming we will just sprint and during the sprint duration we'll talk about the requirement but that's there are many risk on doing that if you are uh, doing a grooming at the planning you don't know what are the dependencies you don't know what are the um, uh, unknowns if there is something product owner is not ready to answer he uh, needs some time to respond and in that case uh, you will not be able to plan that story because product owner may not be able to answer that uh, then and there and if he needs two or three days time then uh, you will have to miss the story on that planning and you will be doing it on the next sprint so that's where we says we do uh, grooming before sprint planning but how much one hour a day or um, two hour a day or once a week twice a week let's see how does that go, um, go. <coughs> so what we will be doing is uh, to calculate let's assume uh, you have a velocity of 33 so if you see we are taking the velocity of last uh, six sprint and on average we got a 33 on a round up that is our velocity and we are assuming here that okay we need to make our backlog health to uh, three, two times of our velocity so here we'll be seeing okay uh, our backlog should always have at least a 66 story points ready in groomed state so expected backlog groom story point so we are, so this two times of a velocity or one time of velocity or three times of velocity it totally depends upon your organization standard or whatever you are targeting as of now for this example we are targeting 66 story point or uh, two times of our velocity to make our backlog healthy so if our backlog have 66 story points ready excluding the current sprint duration uh, current sprint stories and the past sprint stories then we are healthy so we'll again calculate that how much uh, what is our grooming capability so if the scrum master is keeping a note of all the spray, uh, grooming duration and uh, how much time that grooming duration took and what is the story point number of story point they have uh, groomed then you can say okay we are actually on an average of grooming 22.5 story points per uh, what I can say per grooming session so you are actually grooming 22.5 story points uh, per uh, hour so in that case the team needs 66 divided by 2 uh, 22.5 is equal to close to 3 so you need 3 more hours of grooming to reach that level so what we are assuming is if you don't have any stories uh, groomed at this point of time if you start grooming you need at least uh, three hours so it's depend upon if you already have few stories groomed you need uh, the remaining hours of grooming story so You can actually uh, plan how you will be uh, doing that like 1.5 hours a week or uh, mm, two hours per uh, one time a week so based upon this you can actually find out so target three hours grooming for every two weeks that means 1.5 hours per week in this particular case so total grooming uh, you need is 45 minutes two times a week or 1.5 hours every week 
So based upon your current team structure availability, you can schedule that way. So this is how much grooming you need to meet a standard. So whenever we do grooming or we do any activities, we always have a goal. We always have a target. Whenever we do a sprint planning, we target a sprint goal and uh, commit the stories based upon that. If we uh, do a grooming, similarly, we have a goal to reach twice of our velocity. And that way we plan, okay, how much we need to groom. Okay, so uh, here, um, these are the points that I was talking about earlier, why a team should not schedule grooming on or just before sprint planning. So uh, you can pause this video and go through these points. Few of them, uh, let me just go through. Few stories may not ready as per definition of ready. So we need to uh, talk about what is definition of ready. We'll uh, be explaining details on definition of ready later uh, in different session. Few stories need more information to make it ready. The product owner needs some time to clarify some of the doubts that I was talking about, the dependency identifications. It will be very late at the time of uh, sprint planning if you try to identify and find out the availability of cross-functional team. Then efficiency, use of capacity, leaving a chance of scope creep. So if you are leaving, let's say one story is not clear, we are not committing and leaving a buffer in our sprint planning to groom it later or commit it later. So that will introduce a scope creep. And sometimes also it may possible that just because of the incomplete information, uh, you started and committed the story, but later you were failed to complete it and that will again um, bring up your uh, technical depth. And uh, that will be, a, what will happen is if you have a capacity of let's say 200 hours, you were able to plan for 150 hours, then uh, that to fill up your capacity, many team takes technical spikes. That's actually not a very a good habit for uh, uh, do, planning it. So plan whatever you have. If there is nothing uh, available at this point of time, technical uh, take a technical spike. But if you are taking a technical spike because the stories were planned earlier to for this print but not ready. So to avoid those kind of situation, uh, we always say groom your stories much before your sprint planning. So what do we do in grooming? So if we talk about uh, the insights of grooming, we clarify requirements. So the developer talk about the story. They uh, go through what exactly the requirement is, what is the acceptance criteria, what is the description, if there is any wireframe attached, uh, what is it, and they talk in details to understand what exactly the requirement is and clarify, okay, this is what uh, we needs to be developed or we needs to be tested in that way. We talked about invest and 3C. So what is invest? So invest is the characteristics of user story. So this will be a part of your definition of ready once again. But uh, in for quickly, if you want to uh, learn what invest is, this is an acronym. Each story should have that much of uh, characteristics. And if we talk about what is invest, I is for independent, N is for negotiable, V is for valuable or vertical, E is for estimable, S is for small, and T is for testable. So what is independent? A user story has to be independent enough that it can be developed, test, and um, uh, you can mark it ready to release independently. So we are not uh, developing a storage um, UI part in one sprint and we are not making another story for doing a testing. So entire stories, all the life cycle of uh, the development starting from analysis, development, testing and um, UAT, even what is whatever if you have in your definition of done, a story should compile that and it should be uh, independent and potentially deployable. Negotiable, that's the first one, clarifying requirement. We are talking about the stories. We say, okay, if this is big, we can make it into smaller stories. We negotiate with the product owner. We make it uh, more feasible, more understandable, change the acceptance criteria if that is required. So there are many uh, areas where you can actually, as a developer, as a tester, you can negotiate with the product owner to make the story uh, much matured and uh, practically deployable.
Every story has to have a value that you are actually developing, except for if are your discovery story or technical spikes. If it is a story that you have planned for, came from your product owner, that should have a value that can be deployable, a business value, or uh, it, that should make any sense for putting effort on that. And similarly, you can talk about vertical. Vertical is what exactly vertical means here is. If you talk about horizontal, there are different layers of uh, the entire product. For an example, one layer will be analysis for the entire product. One layer will be development for um, uh, entire product. But here we talk about not the entire product, a piece of that product or a part of that product. And within one story, we'll be having visibilities for its planning, analysis, development, testing, UAT. So we are slicing it vertically instead of horizontally. So imagine there is a cake of different layers. If you talk about the first layer is uh, your uh, planning and analysis, next is development and third is testing. We are taking a piece of that cake, a slice where we have all the layers, but for a single uh, particular small part of the entire product. Now, estimable, definitely the story's requirement and details has to be that much uh, clear that a team can estimate, they can identify how big the stories will be. And based on that, they can estimate, they can realize it's a very small, very big, or what will be the uh, best uh, um, assignable story point will be. And now, <coughs> small. Small in the sense, whenever you are actually uh, grooming a story, our main target uh, will be making in the story as small as possible keeping this invest characteristic in mind so that we can manage it well we can estimate it well and uh, we can deploy it well we can test it well now another is testable definitely your user story has to be testable that has to have an acceptance criteria and different scenarios mentioned through which we can invest uh, we can test it the so next is uh, 3C. What is 3C? 3C is, is the structure of a uh, user story. Whenever uh, the product owner is writing a user story, it has to have a three uh, structure. That's a well-written user story. So the 3C is, if we talk about a user story, one is the card. That's the title of the user story where it says role, goal, and benefit. The another is conversation. The conversation is the detailed description of uh, your requirement in the user story. And the confirmation is your acceptance criteria. So that way you structure your uh, user story when you are writing. So you need to look at in the time of grooming that, okay, are we having the um, story written in 3C structure? Is it invest? And later you clarify all your requirements and doubts. That way you can proceed. Now, the another uh, approach you do is splitting story. So if you have a very big stories that we talked about invest uh, to make it small, we'll see if it is possible to split it into multiple, sto uh, multiple smaller stories. We do that. Then we estimate the size. We do uh, estimation uh, mainly on story points uh, using Fibonacci series and to find out if we can estimate the story at then and there if we can't estimate the story that means there is some gaps we ask the product owner to fulfill the gaps or the scrum master whoever is responsible uh, to fulfill the gap we do that and later in the next grooming session we estimate the story so as a output we after estimating the story we get a, a story points for that user story we check on <coughs> the acceptance criteria on the 3C. We talked about uh, the confirmation area. So that is our acceptance criteria. So on the acceptance criteria, we see uh, those are the checklist. And we, in that checklist, we see, okay, what are the different checkpoints we have that we need to look into. So for an example, uh, the stories uh, has to have a code review done. The stories has to have all the manual testing done. The story should... Uh, uh, so whatever the basic requirement is now there are functional acceptance criteria you will be mentioning it so the checklist of all the functional functional checkpoints will be listed there so the tester follows that the uat person who is doing the uat follows that acceptance criteria and then uh, make the story as done or not done based upon whatever you have as a definition of done 
now we talk about definition of ready what is definition of ready definition of ready is again another definition that's uh, is a checklist for saying okay whether our story is ready or not so what do you mean by ready is ready to plan is ready for uh, marking it as groomed so this is checkpoint for an example you can have uh, one point as all stories has to have uh, acceptance criteria all stories has to have follows invest all stories has to have a detailed description if uh, for your uh, particular uh, requirement you can have a um, checkpoint like i need uh, all stories has to have um, defined uh, framework or attachment with the sow so whatever it is so you plan your own definition of ready and make it uh, universal for your team one grooming session two grooming session three grooming session you check that checklist if it is met, if the story is meeting all that uh, checklist you mark it as ready now uh, that is not one time you are fixing you can revise it after certain time you uh, realized uh, that okay this definition of ready we need to add some points or we need to remove some checkpoints that way you can revising it and making the definition also mature but at the time of grooming definitely you need to have a definition of ready checkpoints that you can go through and the story state Okay, so we are talking about stories. So the stories actually started from, uh, if you talk about a very uh, a generic workflow, the story starts from uh, backlog. It came to the backlog. Then the very next take, it, we said it has groomed or defined. So after there, uh, we moved to the story in progress when we uh, start, uh, planned our um, uh, sprint and we started the development. Now the next will be, uh, doing is uh, let's say uh, completed or UAT done or verified whatever the state you can have and the last is done so here after making the story groomed we will be make it as the state as uh, groomed or defined after uh, the groom okay so uh, let's talk about uh, the grooming matrix whenever we are grooming you need to identify the backlog health so how do you uh, we talked about okay uh, how do you measure how much uh, grooming you need to do so keeping that in mind if you have a, if you have a velocity of let's say 32 and you need twice of your velocity that is 64 to be groomed and currently available groom story point is 40 so your backlog health is 62.5 percent so that way you calculate your backlog health and it will be looks like this graph like 62.5 percent is healthy and 37.5 percent will still remain to groom so that way you can keep on monitoring uh, how much stories we need to groom so uh, you can do it in excel or uh, there are few alm tools that uh, you can configure within the alm tools uh, to get this graph and find out how healthy your backlog is there will be another um, group, uh, matrix that you can say is uh, how much uh, i am efficient on grooming so again on every date you are grooming some stories you have spent some time on the session and uh, est estimated some story point so if you take an average of that you see okay on uh, on an average, you are able to uh, groom 11.5 uh, story points per grooming session. So efficiency of, uh, so here you can see, sorry, you can see in uh, total of 180 story points you have groomed and uh, your, um, and that is in 11.5 hours. So total efficiency for last 10 session, it will be 16. So pending story points to groom is 24. So immediate grooming hours needed is 1.53. So the efficiency graph, you can show it this way. This uh, blue line is showing the average efficiency throughout the uh, last 10 sprint. And on every um, uh, grooming session, how much story points you are grooming. Okay, so what... Uh, you will be doing after uh, grooming so you did the grooming you have the estimation you made the definition of ready now what will be the next step so the scrum master can send a summary of grooming session to the team and the interested party and what will be there in the notes 
So if you think this is the structure of that notes, he will be mentioning the team, team name and the grooming notes. Uh, so date and time, duration, attendees who have uh, attended that grooming session, total stories groomed, how many numbers of stories groomed, total story points groomed, how many story points you have groomed, total stories attempted and skipped. So there are a few stories you might have attempted but because of some uncertainty or unavailable information we skip the stories to groom and move to the next uh, story so we need to mention how many stories we attempted so that will give you an idea okay how many stories actually what is the benefits of uh, having grooming before sprint planning now uh, you also need to define uh, the next grooming schedule when you are scheduling the next uh, grooming and the summary of stories groomed. So total stories that uh, you have already groomed, what is the story point and the story title and total story points 29 and also mention the summary of stories not groomed and what is the region that you were unable to groom that story. So that way. So these are the three different sections you uh, can include and also if you want, you can also include the graph of your current backlog health after grooming and how is your grooming efficiency going on along with this mail as an uh, information. Thank you for watching. Uh, this was uh, Niladri Mohapatra once again and uh, we'll talk about the next uh, tutorial very soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.